Hi and welcome back to another episode on how to hack. So today we'll be discussing about the cyber attack chain. The reason why we have to understand about the cyber attack chain is because there are a lot of questions about what goes on in the penetration testing, how are security assessment being carried out, and the best way to actually describe that is to look at the cyber attack chain. So in this case, cyber attack chain is of course developed by Lockheed Martin and it is to help us understand and visualize the step-by-step -step process of how hackers actually go after specific individuals, a particular enterprise that they have been hired to go after, or if they are state-funded hackers, state-sponsored hackers, and they have a particular agency in mind and they are supposed to go after them. So there are so many tutorials and so many different kind of hacking videos available but the whole idea is that whenever you're doing a penetration testing it's important to follow this step-by-step -step process and it will really help you be able to control and manage how far you're going in the cyber attack chain and how far you're going in the penetration testing so on the left side we actually have the different phases and of course we have seven phases so here we got reconnaissance which is about finding out information on publicly available websites and of course we have weaponization is number two so this is about how we can create the payload whether it is a fully undetectable payload a macro excel it's about how we can weaponize it and delivery are we going to use a usb are we going to send a phishing email are we going to send an sms so again those are the delivery mechanisms that we'll be using in terms of putting the weaponization or the weaponized payload into the system and of course we have our exploitation so exploitation is a way for us to actually attack into the system so it will execute it will execute the particular exploit that we have created in number two which is the weaponized payload and number five is installation so we'll install the malware into the system into the mobile device or any it assets that we have our hand on and this is when we go into number six where we have command and control so whenever you're looking at the tutorials you're looking at metasploit framework as the command and control center to manage and control many of these devices and of course the final thing is on actions and objectives so this is what are we trying to accomplish have we achieved our goal what was the goal was it for personal data was it for credit card information was it for financial data was it for state secrets so again all these are the things that we're looking at in terms of the cyber attack chain so of course why discuss the cybersecurity Q chain. So it's really important whether you're talking about the Q chain or cyber attack chain because many, many enterprises or users can be victimized by many of these cyber breaches. And over here, we can see the different companies that have been compromised. And again, it all follows the same steps. So if you read up about the hacks that have happened, you recognize that many of these hacks that have happened follow this specific step. So if you manage to get a detailed report on it, you'll be able to see how the hackers actually carry out the attack. And it is very similar to what you see in the cyber attack chain, all the cybersecurity queue chain. So the first step is about reconnaissance. So reconnaissance is about finding publicly available information using who is, using domain name servers information, look out on their servers and be able to find out what data they have using Netcraft, using all these different kind of publicly available information, including also on Google searching to find out usernames, passwords, more things about the domains, going into the dark web, finding accounts, data or passwords of this particular enterprise and getting those data there so again the characteristics of this it could range from minutes all the way to weeks and months trying to find out all this data and because a lot of users have social media accounts so again those are good places to also start off at to find out more details about an enterprise about the individuals working in the enterprise so this is what we call passive reconnaissance we are trying to find out all publicly available information not directly interacting with the enterprise so do note on that and of course, this is where we have the active reconnaissance. So active reconnaissance means we are probing the system. So whenever you look at Nmap that we have been using in the number of the tutorials, we are trying to get details about the services of the systems and the servers that are available inside that particular enterprise. So we are actually trying to probe directly into the system, looking at fingerprinting, reconnaissance, we are working and we are pinging the system to find out more details and data. So these are information that we can find out immediately from. So again, 
Active reconnaissance and passive reconnaissance are very different in terms of trying to find out all these details. So of course, this is where we go into the weaponization stage. So the weaponization stage would actually allow us to see what kind of payload we can create. So the first and the most used is actually using MSF Venom, or you could actually use other different kind of tools to create the payload. So you could write your own script or your own malicious software if you know C programming and, and so on, or you want to put it up on the PowerShell, you want to get a reverse shell on it, you want to get a C shell on it. So again, all these are available as part of weaponization. And in terms of weaponization, we're also thinking about how can we make it fully undetectable. So then we'll use encoding method, we use different kind of methods to mask the capability from detection by antivirus systems and of course ultimately this would bring us into the delivery stage so in the delivery phase this is the part where we're thinking about how are we going to deliver the payload into the user's machine so again over here we got a social engineer toolkit that you see in a number of tutorials so it's about website attacks you want to create a website host a particular payload do you want to create an infectious media generator put it into a USB drive Execute it the moment the user plug it into the computer. Do you want to have a payload? Do you want to use mass mailers? So all these options are here inside the social engineer toolkit and we'll be exploring a lot more later on. So this is about the transmission of the attack. How do we get the payload, the weaponized payload into the user's computer? So again, another key point in terms of sending out the face. And another thing to think about is also what kind of payload are you doing? Because some of these delivery mechanisms can be very different. So one, you could be using a lot of phishing emails that could be blasted out to millions of users. Or two, it could be a very targeted, very specific format of the email that is sent to one person where we just want that person to click onto it so that we can go after the particular entity. And this is on the exploitation stage. So this is what happens once you're weaponized, you've delivered, the user clicks onto it and you get a revision shell immediately. So this is the detonation of the attack. So once the exploit happens, we are in, we are into the system and this allow us to have control of their environment. So again, this is all about gaining access, bypassing security mechanism. So this is the detonation of the payload. And of course, once you have the detonation, this is where we go into the installation. So this is where we want persistence inside the system. We want to have the ability to persist inside the mobile device, inside the server, inside the computer device. So again, this is what we call a payload again on the screenshot. So this is a macros have been disabled. Once the user click on enable content, immediately we'll get an access and we'll install a payload into the system and we will actually create persistence so that we can be able to latch onto the computer system no matter how much they update to it. And of course, this is the command and control. In command and control, we have a number of options inside the channel where we discuss about how we can actually control the system. So the first one that is most used a lot of time is using Metasploit framework. And it's also, of course, on Empire PowerShell. So Empire directly to manage based on the PowerShell scripting. So another great way for us to manage many, many of these computers and systems. So this is what we call the bots. So any of these computers that have been hacked into, we call them the bots and we're controlling them. And on the top, you can see we got the bot herder. So the bot herder actually allows you, which is you to control what the bots will do as a result of them being hijacked into. So of course, the focus can be very different. So if you're a state funded hacker, chances are you're going for sensitive data, confidential data, top secret data, top secret data, meaning they have grave danger to a nation. So you're going after those specific data. And if you are a cyber criminal who is going after for financial gains, then you have a very different set of data. You could be looking for credit card information, using passwords you can sell on the dark web. So again, the purpose, the action and the objective can be very different across many different kinds of threats, many different kinds of attacks. So of course, the question will be, if I'm a defender, I'm on the blue team and I want to protect against this cyber attack, what can we do? So the whole idea goes back into the concept of defense, defense in depth. So defense in depth means that we must always have a way of slowing down the attacker. So if a state-funded hacker, someone who is persistent in trying to get into your enterprise, getting your data, what we can do is slow down the person as much as possible and keep changing the different kind of security mechanisms or countermeasures that we have in place that will take a very long time for the hacker to go after you. So 
if you're managing an enterprise, you may have thousands of computers, endpoints, servers, and so on. So what you do is you will actually make sure that you have antivirus systems, you have a security monitoring platform, you have a web application firewall, database firewall, and many different of these security mechanisms in place that will slow down the hacker. So if the hacker want to get into you through USB and you realize that all of your endpoints have USB disabled then the hacker have to try something else in order to gain access into the system. And this will take longer and longer for them to persist through in order to gain access into your sensitive data. So defense in depth is going to be a great way for you to actually stop many of these potential threats. So of course, there are some potential flaws with the whole idea of the cyber attack chain. And of course, thinking about the cyber IQ chain is that the hacker has to go through every of this single phase. But the reality is that that's not the case because the hacker could perhaps be able to get all your usernames and passwords directly from publicly available information due to other data breaches. And from there on, they could immediately get access into many of your accounts and credentials. So that could be a very quick way because on point number two, all seven steps must be successful for a successful cyber attack to occur. But that's not always the case because once you got usernames, once you got passwords, you could morph your attack into other ways or other objectives in order to gain other kind of sensitive data. So of course, on the final point, the defender has seven opportunities to break the chain and minimize their exfiltration. So if you're playing blue team, again, you recognize that you do have the advantage if we are trying to conceptualize playing defense in terms of trying to stop the hacker from gaining full access or completing the full cyber attack chain. So once again, I hope you learned something valuable in today's lecture. So if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below and I'll try my best to answer any of your questions. So remember to like, share and subscribe to the channel so that you can become abreast of the latest cybersecurity tutorial. Thank you so much once again for watching.